Do you recall this bewitched character? You do. I couldn't forget her. Her bright, flowy clothes, dramatic eye makeup, and razor-sharp wit were the perfect mix of class and attitude. You knew something strange or intriguing had happened once she appeared. She spoke cruel things swiftly, especially to her son-in-law, Darren, which was smart and terrible. Who could transform Darren into Durwood or Dumb so well? And Dora was more than a number. She was iconic. She was backed by star Agnes Moorhead. This is the catch. Being in Dora didn't suit Agnes Moorhead. Hard to believe, right? She was so brilliant at the part it seemed made for her. She did play Bewitched following other parts. Long after becoming one of the best actors of her period, Agnes was famous in Hollywood and on stage before she enchanted Darren Stevens, her legacy beyond TV. No Agnes discussion is complete without Bewitched. The show had many debuts. The 1964 show was about beautiful witch Samantha Stevens trying to live a regular life with her human husband, Darren. Normal was never an option because Samantha's mystical family always interfered. But Samantha's mother and Dora caused most of the turmoil. Not just Darren bothered her. She laughed while doing everything she could to make his life miserable. Agnes contributed something unique. Her influence made Endora likable and unpleasant. She planned to break up Samantha and Darren one minute and be happy of Tabitha and Adam the next. She was cruel, witty, and hard to reach. It's the perfect witchy mother-in-law. We must go back in time to learn how Agnes became Endora. She was powerful before she transformed people into toads on prime time. Let's discuss her film debut in Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane is considered the best film ever. An original and significant film. Agnes also played Mary Kane, Charles Foster Kane's mother. How brilliantly she portrayed her first movie role proved she wasn't simply another Hollywood wannabe. Her little but significant role established the tone for her later endeavors. How did she earn a big role so fast? Agnes was an experienced actress. She was famous for her work with Orson Welles' Mercury Players Radio Group. People believed aliens were attacking Earth during her time on Welles' 1938 War of the Worlds presentation. Welles took Agnes to Hollywood because he thought she would succeed. She shined. After Citizen Kane, Agnes led The Magnificent Embersons, another Welles film. Her portrayal of Aunt Fanny Tinnifer earned her an Oscar nomination. After watching the movie, you realize why. Her performance was sincere, complex, and extraordinary. This showed her ability to develop characters. She was living the role, not just acting. Let's revisit Bewitched. Agnes showed she was a serious performer in the first episode. Something about Bewitched, not just a humor show, it was the second most watched US show in its initial season. Fans appreciated how the show combined magic humor and family drama, and Dora was crucial. Although she wasn't the show's primary character, her fiery attitude and humorous one-liners made her stand out. But Agnes didn't think Bewitched was her best. The fast-paced TV environment was a major adjustment for her from dramatic movies and plays. However, her dedication to the role shows, and Dora wasn't a cartoon witch. She had depth, pride, openness, and heart from Agnes. Remember that Agnes's efforts went beyond TV. Her versatility could surprise. Look at her Twilight Zone performance. In the Invaders episode, she played a woman startled by small aliens. How strange that the show had little conversation. Agnes's body language and expressions revealed all. Many consider it one of the show's best episodes, demonstrating her expertise. She also appeared in Hush, Hush Sweet Charlotte was her debut film starring Bette Davis and Olivia de Havilland. Agnes was fantastic in the movie she could play any role and make it unforgettable. When Bewitched came along, Agnes Moorhead was an expert. She was one of the most respected character actresses and had worked with Orson Welles during the Golden Age. When she started working on TV in the 1960s, it was a new experience for her, but she brought her usual expertise and strong ideas. She accepted the role of Endora in 1964 without much deliberation. She later admitted she didn't expect the show to succeed. Is it your fault? At the time, TV actors like her were rare. Still, playing Samantha's supernatural mother who hates people allowed her freedom. She agreed to appear in eight of 12 performances. This would give her plenty of time to work elsewhere. That way. She could reconcile her show duties with her wish to pursue happier work. It was sensible, right? Here, things got tough. Bewitched exploded in popularity. The show immediately became one of the top 10 US shows following its first season. Agnes gained new fame overnight. A successful woman was surprised by the transformation. Kids enjoyed Endora's wacky attitude, while adults loved her humor. Agnes was so captivating that she stole every scene. You couldn't look away from her, whether she was enchanting Darren or delivering a punchline. Truthfully, Agnes wasn't happy. She told TV Guide in 1965 that the show's writing was hack. Too harsh, perhaps. In some respects, she was right. Back then, sitcom plots weren't that creative. For Agnes, who had been praised for years, Endora may have seemed too little. It wasn't hard for her. She stressed that in her speeches, people appreciated the character, so Agnes gave it her all. 
Her efforts on the show earned her six Emmy nominations, which is impressive. She quickly told folks she had done more than Bewitched when they tried to limit her to that show. The New York Daily News reported in 1965, I've been in movies and played theater from coast to coast. I was famous before Bewitched. I dislike being called the witch. That must be frustrating, but I can see why. Agnes toiled for years to become an actress, but now everyone just remembers her as Endora. She liked one part of her profession, despite her mixed feelings about it. While working together, Agnes always had positive things to say about Samantha star Elizabeth Montgomery. Thanking her for her friendliness, many fans loved seeing them together since they got along on TV. Agnes enjoyed Montgomery and claimed she was fun to work with. Not everyone on set liked Agnes. Dick Sargent replaced Dick York as Darren in 1969, bringing a cold. Agnes wasn't shy about her dislike of the transfer. York quit the show due to health issues. Agnes hated the change, but it was necessary. York had amazing comedic timing, she thought. She was believed to have handled Sergeant coldly when he took over. Sergeant subsequently reported she made him cry several times, not about them. Agnes hated change, especially when it harmed her favorite relationship. With Sergeant, they settled in. Though close, their relationship never warmed up like York's. Agnes continued until 1972, when the show ended. For eight years, she had insulted Endora and taken scenes in her beautiful clothes. She played the part professionally and stylishly, making it memorable even though it wasn't her best. We shouldn't ignore her impact on youth. She wasn't just a bothersome mother-in-law. It was like she was magical. She was a youngster favorite because of her sparkling outfits and vivacious demeanor. Many desired they could twitch their noses and make things happen like Samantha. Between shooting Bewitched, Agnes worked on other projects. These included a 1965 Chevrolet commercial with Bonanza star Dan Blocker. Comedy and joy filled the spot. Demonstrating her artistic versatility, she often mentioned in interviews that she didn't enjoy fast-paced, unstructured TV, but she never let it affect her work. She worked hard on every job, even a dumb car ad bit. Agnes was passionate about show business in interviews. Performers should remain mysterious, she believed. When asked, she didn't believe in behind-the-scenes photos and interviews. It breaks the fantasy, she remarked. Agnes believed acting was about creating a world for the audience to escape. She thought lifting the curtain detracted from the experience. Her style suits this old-fashioned method. She was good at her job and expected others to be. Agnes Moorhead was gifted. Despite her successful career, her final years were too much for her. Her health declined in the 1970s, yet she continued to labor with the same fervor. Many of her endeavors were unrelated to Bewitched. After that, she played darker, more haunting roles, as if discovering a new side of herself. Night Gallery was one of her best works then. In Something Shadows on the Wall, she plays a dying woman who haunts her family. It was eerie and powerful, showing how expertly she controlled the screen, despite her declining condition. Agnes did this repeatedly. Her next roles were in scary films like What's the Matter with Helen? With Shelley Winters and Debbie Reynolds, she led the low-budget film Dear Dead Delilah. Her last main part wasn't a big thing, but it demonstrated she was still prepared to take risks after decades in the profession. Agnes explored horror, but she always returned to theater. She reprised her role in Don Juan in Hell. She always loved Ricardo Theater, and she appeared to find peace there as she reconciled her failing health with her passion of acting. This time she performed with an all-star lineup including Edward Mulhair. Many don't know Agnes' other side. She taught English and performed. As acting school director, she wanted to teach control and respect for the craft. She valued hard work, preparation, and dedication. Skill wasn't enough. Your job has to be fun. That was Agnes throughout. She enjoyed performing so much she gave speeches. She played the Goose in Charlotte's Web's 1973 animated adaptation. Her later work was more entertaining because of this warm and hilarious component. Her Broadway role as Annalicia in Gigi was similarly difficult. Because of her declining health, she left the show early, with Arlene Francis replacing her. A few months before her death in January 1974, Agnes worked. She returned to the medium that made her famous in the inaugural CBS Radio Mystery Theater show. It was too good to be true. One last look at her trip's beginning. Work and personal life were equally complicated for Agnes. Both of her marriages ended. Married actor John Griffith Lee in 1930. They parted a year after having Sean Lee, their son. Her second marriage to actor Robert Gist lasted four years. She reportedly had a secret romance for decades. Some thought she was a lesbian, while others laughed at the concept. Co-stars like Paul Lynn fueled speculations. Close pals like Debbie Reynolds and producer Paul Gregory dismissed the charges as malicious or misunderstandings. Agnes remained mysterious. After being asked about the claims, she provided a humorous, imprecise answer in an interview. She valued her privacy and believed actors' personal lives should remain private. Her priority was work. They revealed her complexity. She played Eleanor Roosevelt several times and supported Franklin D.
Roosevelt. She was close friends with Ronald Reagan and supported his 1966 California governorship bid. Her friendships and occupations demonstrated that she was a unique woman who trusted her instincts. Agnes health issues culminated. The 1956 film The Conqueror, shot in Utah near atomic bomb tests, was linked to her worst experience. John Wayne, Susan Hayward, Agnes, and other film crew members had cancer later. Movie workers numbered 220. In 1980, 91 had cancer and 46 died. Scary Heritage accompanied her into her latter years. On April 30th, 1974, Agnes died at Rochester's Mayo Clinic. She died at 73 from uterine cancer. Her fascinating life ended, but her work continued. She influenced movies, TV, and those who knew worked with and learned from her. Willingly, she gave back. Her essays and $25,000 scholarship bequest to Muskingum College and the University of Wisconsin were a lovely gift. John Brown University acquired her Ohio property and Bible collection. She cared after her mother Mary and left her clothes and jewelry. Most notably, she neglected her adopted son Sean Lee, writing in her will that she had no biological or adoptive children, living or dead. Strength, skill, and depth characterize Agnes Moorhead. From her childhood in Clinton, Massachusetts, to her radio career, she worked hard. Even if she didn't always like her roles, she brought them to life. Real artists do that.